SJC 12117, Matthew John Allen and others v. Attorney General and another. Mr. Kiley, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chief Justice, members of the court. Um, I represent the petitioners in the Allen case. They include the draftsmen, the signers, the, um, uh, the people who interacted with the Attorney General with respect to the summary in August of uh, last year, with respect to the initiative petition that you've just heard in the Hensley case. My case, the Allen case, relates to the title and to the yes-no statement. To answer Justice Cordy's question, yes, this court has authority to modify the, um, the yes-no statement or to direct the Attorney General to do it. Do you think we have authority to modify the um, summary? I think the answers that the court has received, Justice Bartsford, are accurate. They, the court has not done it I before. appreciate that we have not done um, it. Do you think we uh, have the authority? I, I think that the Article 48 prescribes that the summary that appear on the ballot be the summary as determined by the Attorney General. Um, I think that is in the form of ballot provision that exists uh, at the back end of Article 48. Right. Um, that, that there is no place in Article 48 other than at the inception when the, when the summary is being prepared for circulation to the voters that the Attorney General determines the summary. Um, so the way the process works, as I'm sure the court works, is in the odd-numbered year, the petitions are filed, there is a process that, uh, that is described in the Attorney General's submissions in August with input from lots of people. Uh, the summary is circulated. The summary is circulated again. That summary is in circulation now. The second round of signatures has to be turned in by July 6th. So the, the summary for the purposes of, uh, of voter signatures to get the measure before the electorate um, will be underway even if you meet the requested July 11th date. So, um, so can, 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 the, can the S statement um, be revised in such a way to ameliorate the concerns um, uh, that were expressed in the previous case? Sure. Uh, um, well, first, I, I would suggest to you that each one of these things has its own office mm -hmm. in the Article 48 panoply. Um, the, uh, the provisions dealing with the yes-no statement are to describe the effect of the law. Uh, it's not unlike the summary, which is a summary of the proposed law, a fair and concise summary. The, what, I, what I heard being discussed is effects. Now, in my case, the argument is that including THC is um, not an effect, not a proper effect, Part of the reason it is not a proper effect is that THC in its synthetic as well as its natural form is legalized in the way the Attorney General use it, uses it in 94C34L, in the, the petition that was before. It's not legalized, right? In the, in the sense that the Attorney General uses it, it is. Um, Legal I think legalization. In the sense that she uses it, it's legalized equals decriminalized. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, it, I'm sorry. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the um, I quarrel with the use of the term legalization. <coughs> Marijuana, the substance, is not about to be legalized. Particular uses, particular quantities, is going to be if the people vi uh, accept this position, um, permitted legalized in the sense that the Attorney General um, uses it, but not totally legalized. Um, and it is in that sense that the effect is the same with, re respect, with respect to THC as in the, um, the decriminalization law as it becomes popularly, popularly known. 
more detail in every one of the, I'm sorry, Justice Gantz, okay. you, uh, um, more detail in every one of these situations um, can inform the electorate. And the electorate is informed in a variety of matters, not the least of which, and certainly the most of which, involves the campaign itself. Um, now, is your concern that, legal, that the word legalization is unfair or that it's incomplete? Uh, it's really that it's incomplete. I have no problem with the use of the word legalization by itself. So, uh, if, if, so if, if the alternative were legalization, regulation, and taxation of marijuana for adult use, Fine. Uh, um, is that what you seek? Yes. That's the sentence you seek? Um, well, it isn't the sentence that we proposed in the four-day window that we had in, uh, no, in April. No, what are you proposing right, What you proposed was regulation I, I think, and taxation Justice, of marijuana. For free. Regulation and taxation right. of the, ma marijuana uh, and, and legalization, legalization for adult use would be fine with me. Okay, because, I mean, when prohibition ended, was alcohol legalized? It's an interesting question, but I want to make a point off of that, if I may, to Justice Botsford's question and Justice Cordy's questions with respect to I will give you a little bit more time because we asked you questions about the matter that's actually not your case, so I will, I will, um, I will allow you to, to speak our about your peti case. Our petition says in its first sentence what its purpose is. It's not in a preamble, it's in the first section of the law, and it is to regulate and tax marijuana in a manner similar to alcohol. Alcohol does go into food products. Um, when, I, when I come back from vacation in Mexico, I'm bringing chocolate infused with tequila. It happens. Um, uh, there isn't a, an adult from my generation who doesn't know that marijuana goes into brownies or chocolate chip cookies. Some of us may not know it goes into beverages or ice cream, but the reality is that marijuana, the substance, the goal here is to, or the purpose is to regulate it like alcohol, and that means in Massachusetts not available to people under 21 years old. That's the purpose. We explain our intent in the next, sen in the next sentence. Those are the unifying, that's the unified proposition that we're asking the voters to cast their ballots on. And um, so with respect to... What does marijuana concentrate? It's a form of, it's like alcohol, it's a higher proof. Is that THC? THC can be, um, sure. Is there anything else that's a marijuana concentrate I, other than Not taste? that I know. I can't say that there is. I'm not an ex I do know brownies, Justice Cordy, but I don't know, I, I don't know the rest. I don't know the science. So you, so you don't know how it, this gets infused into drinks and other edible products. Is it the THC that gets infused? It, the THC? I, well, I, I know that you bake the marijuana in the brownie, Justice Cordy, and that's, a, that's the extent the of leaf? my sophistication. You bake the stems and the leaves? I or? think it, you could make a tea in a tea bag. Uh, as a matter of fact, but that's not what I talking know about you here. can do that. That's not what we're talking about here. Well, right? it might be if you you're selling bottled teas. If uh, you look at Colorado, 45% of the market's in edibles? I have no knowledge. I, the Colorado experience is not the experience that I, I intended when I've drafted the statute. Now, it is a matter for public debate, sure. and that is an office that Article 48 has, um, from the very beginning, um, identified as what is going to happen with respect to Article 48. I can't emphasize enough the importance of preserving the people's process, as Mr. Toon did. This is a classic case where the people of Massachusetts are being asked to decide whether they think marijuana in its variety of forms should be treated like alcohol, both of which have intoxicating features. Um, that is a proposition that is opposed by government, by the attorney general, by the district attorneys, by the sheriffs. It's opposed. It isn't enacted. Article 48 exists for the people to be able to propose a law and get it before the electorate. Person, don't you think the electorate ought to know what's in it? Yes. And, and, and what role the way, does the Attorney General have in that regard? To write a fair and concise summary 
um, and give it to the Secretary of State not earlier than the first Wednesday in September, and then to collaborate with the Secretary of the Commonwealth in preparing a, uh, a, a title and a yes-no effect statement, and then to leave the argument to the proponents and the opponents. And what we have in this particular case, in Hensley, <coughs> is an attempt to infuse the argument that will exist with respect to this question into the earliest part of the uh, process, the summary process, where they sat on their hands. Um, and the court finds itself in the awkward position of having to schedule a special session here uh, to deal with these initiative questions because there is a printing deadline uh, for the Red Book, for the information for pamphlet of July 11th. And as I've laid out in my um, brief, in my case, when July 11th comes and goes, it will still not be certain what the questions are that are on the ballot. So you, you are having a schedule thrust on you that is a function of a printing deadline that, that deals with questions that could have been raised last September. And this you case say could. It's, it's not certain what, what, what questions will be on the ballot because you need more votes. Is that what you mean? Well, the, the signature process doesn't end till the 6th. You have five days to challenge signatures to before the State Battle Law Commission. Okay. There's then a hearing and all of, I, I laid out, yeah, I no, laid I out the But the question is, things. why will it not be clear on the 11th what the questions are, assuming, uh, assuming we do our work before then? Um, if there is a petition that is filed, the way Chapter 55B works, the State Ballot Law Commission, uh, I'm cursed with too much election knowledge, Your Honor, I'm sorry. The, the, way, the way the statute works, um, you have five days from the submittal, from the last date the signatures are due with the secretary. Signatures are due with the secretary this year, July 6th. July, I have five days after that, people have five days to challenge the signatures. That's July 11th. If there's a challenge, there, uh, the, um, that will still be Ongoing. They're not going to hold a hearing um, at midnight on or 11 p.m. on. The so it's it's resolution of that challenge if there is one. And and the other point, and again, it's in my Allen brief. When you're looking for the practicalities that you need to be concerned with moving forward on these things, there are a whole lot of things that go into the red book. Uh, um, there are the arguments have to go into the red book. Um, the the process here with respect to the, to the uh, yes, no uh, effect, mm -hmm. I mean, the AG sent a note, uh, an e email on Thursday, April 14th, looking for responses by Tuesday, April 19th, uh, uh, by close of business. It was a very truncated process. Um, it came to the proponents, it went to the Opponents, the record is silent when the opponents first surfaced. It wasn't during the certification process. Um, and, th and that April 19 deadline, th there is simply no reason in the world that, that that process couldn't have been done in January or February or November of last year. If you want to do an orderly process, uh, that permits the kind of meaningful judicial review that you're looking to give this as a full bench, um, then you need to start the process earlier. And that was the point that I tried to make in argument three of my Allen brief. Is, is there a page limit or a word limit to the arguments uh, uh, by the proponents and the opponents of, of a particular question that goes into the Red Book. Yes, it's a hun it is now 150 words down from 500, which it used to be. And that has not been established yet? The, those, those, the arguments have not yet been established? No, what I can say is at the time that I wrote my brief, but the statute again prescribes that the proponents of the measure, the first 10 signers, are going to be the people asked 
to by write Secretary it. Galvin's office. We hadn't been. So at the time I wrote my brief, um, that we hadn't been asked for that argument yet. And I, again, as I lay out in my brief, the determination, the discretionary determination the Secretary will make, Justice Spina, um, with respect to who the opponents will be to get to write it, is made after the signatures are submitted on July 6th. So I didn't, just in response to that last question, you said you hadn't been asked by the time, I think you filed. Yeah, have, I, have you been asked since then? Not that I know of. Oh. Wow. Not that I know of. I mean, um, so you still I, I have not. Uh, Will Luzier, who is one of my co-plaintiffs in the Allen Maddott, uh, is, um, is the principal contact for the organization. I don't think we've been asked yet. And is but there, I, can't, is, I can't represent it as fact. Is there any limit other than practicalities uh, on the yes-no statements? A word limit? No, one sentence. One sentence. So it, it's, it's one sentence to describe, and again, it's to has describe. Has to be one sentence? That's by Chapter Has to be one B. sentence. There, uh, and there's it, no prohibition against a Faulknerian one sentence? <laughs> well, you know, there's a problem with those things because you might get into related subjects areas, Your Honor, but uh, the conjunction end is always a problem in this area. All right, thank you. Thank you. I'd like just to make two general points um, in response to the argument just now. Um, Justice Cordy again raised the issue of marijuana concentrate. And I think the fact that uh, Mr. Kiley, the very talented and experienced counsel for the proponents, the fact that he cannot provide clear answers to what marijuana concentrate means shows the peril of second guessing the Attorney General's judgment as to what terms are included in the summary. Marijuana no, concentrate I mean, it's, it's, can it's mean the, least, it's defined, the less you know, it's defined the better you in, off you are? It's defined in the, in, in the proposed statute. It's defined in the proposed statute as uh, the uh, essentially the resin and things the adapted for the resin. Is that helpful to voters? Are they going to understand what that means? In, re in the real world, marijuana concentrate can mean an oil, a tincture, a honey-like substance, a wax. It can mean all sorts of things. Does it give voters clarity? These are the judgment calls that the Attorney General had to grapple with in coming up with a fair, concise, and neutral summary. And it is, it is difficult to come in at this stage and say, oh, she should include this term and this term, but not this term, even though they all fall under with the, the, the umbrella term of marijuana products. Um, with respect to the title, again, this shows the judgment calls that are involved. Um, the proponents would like a title that takes away the term legalization and adds the term regulation. Legalization is an accurate term for this because the effect of the proposed law would be to effectively neuter all civil and criminal prohibitions on the use, possession, cultivation, and, and sale of marijuana within certain limits. Um, to well, I mean, but that's, that's not true. I mean, it's not going to permit sale to children. It's not going to invalidate federal law. Of course. Uh, isn't, no, there are, there are it, many isn't limits. It, isn't it, I mean, let, let, me, let me ask you the question I asked of Mr. <coughs> Kiley. Would a better title not be legalization, regulation, and taxation of marijuana for adult use? Well, I think at some point, Your Honor, the, the title is meant to serve a very limited purpose of simply identifying in the Information for Voters Guide what this question deals with. And so to try to include all the pertinent information, all the, the main features of the law, it's not supposed to be a summary of the summary. It's supposed to indicate, oh, voters looking at the guide, this is what this question is about. Let me read more about it. The more facts that we include, the more features we include in the title, the more negative, ero erroneous negative implications which, um, that are which, given out. Which, this which, is, this which, summarizes which, which the entire. Part, which part of the, of the term legalization, regulation, and taxation of marijuana for adult use do you consider to be inaccurate? No, I, I, I don't think that's an inaccurate title. I think it's a very long title. I think it but may negative. defeat the purpose of being a title. You, uh, you mentioned that you don't want to convey a negative. Is it ne which is more negative, to include that or not include it? I think, that, I think that the, the purpose is to give the basic thrust of the initiative. And the basic thrust of the initiative is legalization of marijuana. Regulation and taxation are important components of it. They are covered in the summary that will come with a ballot title, but it's not necessary for the title to include every, uh, all of those aspects. And it defeats the purpose of a concise title that voters can look at the voter information guide and know this is what I'm going to be reading about. So again, there are many different judgment calls that are involved here. And uh, I just encourage the court to give the deference it's always shown to the attorney general, particularly when it comes to the summary, but also to the attorney general and the secretary in their efforts to come up with fair, concise, and not misleading one-sentence statements and titles. 
there are no further questions? Thank you.